when I was a child, there was a rock in front of my house. <laughs> you started off with like, oh, we'll get three members in our first month. Let's just begin with that. <laughs> <laughs> three members. My belief is that climbers are a population that will do more good for an area. It's a beginning. Yeah. But I do feel that there is a lot that competitive climbers will need to be able to up their game. <laughs> You are about to watch Pahadcast with Dhilan Chandramoli and Vinda Bagheria. For more content from the Indian Outdoors, subscribe to our channel. Yes, I don't mind if the bride likes yellow, orange, chai, coffee, <laughs> daru, anything yellow. is okay. <laughs> Uh, as long as uh, once in a while, at least once every week, we need to be able to dance like uh, Rekha from 1978. <laughs> and I'm currently taking twerking classes. I like making <laughs> chicken 65. <laughs> and yes, because I feel the twerking is helping my hip movement. <laughs> and yeah, so I promise to be a very nice husband. और हमारे बीच में बगेरिया वृंदा बगेरिया या दैट डेफिनेटली हेल्प लाइक आई वाज क्वाइट नर्वस इन डूइंग यू गाइस सो ओ द इंटरव्यू स्टार्टेड स्टार्टेड लाइक ओ ओके फाइन शिट आई थॉट दिस वाज द साउंड चेक ओके सो सो या वेलकम टू अ न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ पॉडकास्ट एंड टुडे वी आर हियर विद डिलन एंड वृंदा अ डिलन इज द प्राइम प्राइम डेवलपर ऑफ सेतन and uh, vrinda is the founder of boulder box a co-founder of boulder box a new climbing facility in new delhi so the main question that we are going to discuss with both you guys is why is there a need for development of new climbing spaces in india mujhe kuch yaad aaya so uh, i was riding a motorcycle in himachal back in 2011 so there was a गाय हो आस फॉर लिफ्ट तो मैंने उसको बिठाया एंड वी एड अ गुड हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स राइड सो देन वी ऑल्टेड एंड ही आज पी की ये मतलब शुरू कब हुआ आप ऐसे चलाना मोटरसाइकिल सो आई रियलाइज इट वॉज इज फर्स्ट ट्रिप टू दी माउंटेन्स एंड ही वॉज लाइक इट इज टर्न तो ही आज भी लॉड ऑफ क्वेश्चन बहुत क्यूरियस गाय एंड कि मोटरसाइकिल स्टार्ट कब हुआ चलाना मैंने मतलब अभी कुछ साल पहले हिमाचल की ट्रिप मारी थी एक फिर उत्तराखंड की ऐसा स्टार्ट इन टेलिंग दी स्टोरी देन ही सेड डो स्टार्ट कब हुआ मतलब घर से निकलना कब स्टार्ट हुआ ये शुरू कब हुआ देन आई टू डिग डीप एंड आई गॉट बैक इन टू माई चाइल्ड हुड और सोचने लगा मैं कि हाउ इट ऑल स्टार्टेड देन वाइल राइडिंग आई रियलाइज बैक देन वेन आई वॉज इन स्कूल आई यूज टू बंक माई क्लासेस टू स्टील मोटरसाइकिल्स ऑफ माई सीनियर्स एंड गो टू आर राइड एंड देन कम बाय स्कूल खत्म होने तक तो डी यू remember any incident as a child would i want you to remember it that how it all started what was the first thing i mean i've actually always been a very unfit and a very like mm-hmm. quiet shy kind of child who never really interacted with people uh sports was never my thing i never played any sport or even went outdoors growing up i was always like inside my room pretty much um So I think I connected with climbing because it was an individual sport yeah. and I didn't need anyone else especially for bouldering. Um it allowed for creative expression which is also something that I used to do like I used to draw when I was alone. Um and I studied graphic design so um I think that aspect of the sport is what still connects with me. Um the other reason is probably that I've always had this urge to stay fit since I've always been fat in my childhood you know there's this like haunting idea of being yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. overweight and climbing has now become a means for life and fitness and all of that so i mean i think that's where my sort of childhood connects to climbing, you climbing today yeah Oof. um there's a trajectory if not a specific incident because from the time i was a uh, child that was quite enamored by wildlife mm-hmm. and I wanted to become a wildlife biologist and later on I wanted to sort of specialize in herpetology and snakes really took up my interest and then I used to uh I used to enjoy the jungles a lot I used to travel to Agombe and you know 
Kerala and all these places and I really and I really used to enjoy Yuli. It was Yuli. <laughs> no 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 Yuli doesn't mean anything. Huli means uh tiger and kind of But anyways it was a Um Yeah, I used to do a lot of smaller trips to national parks and sanctuaries which were wildlife focused with my dad and my mom and then later on alone. So there was that. And I think you know adventure vague does overlap with that. I started enjoying trekking quite a bit as I started growing up. I spent uh a decent amount of time traveling alone. I spent about two and a half months or so alone and nearly two and a half months. Look into my eyes. How old were you when you were doing this? Um, twenty-one, mm-hmm. twenty-two. But then I kind of started trekking even before that, and then sometime I don't know about two thousand four or five. A friend of mine introduced me to mountaineering as and he didn't take me to the mountains but he told me about mountaineering and he said man you need to go and do your course at and I am in I've done my basic and advanced and search and rescue so that kind of you know got into my mm. mental ecosystem and so I think all these things kind of converged and then I started climbing because I wanted to do something that I enjoyed and then it clicked mm. but I think it yeah I would say It was that there was no when I was a child there was a rock in front of my house <laughs> I would look at that rock and wonder when can I climb it <laughs> I tried I failed I tried again my neighbor made fun of me <laughs> I cried and then I came back with a vengeance no there was no such incident yeah. it was sort of like yeah wildlife wilderness uh trekking adventure climbing and then climbing seriously so that was the <laughs> So, like coming back to the main question, why do you guys think ki there is a need for development of new spaces, new climbing spaces in India? I don't know, I think you should answer first. <laughs> um I'm going to be straight out honest. I don't necessarily I didn't necessarily come into this from the from some sort of messiah angle. I didn't want to start developing because there is something i want to do for the community or any such thing it just there was something that interested me exploration finding new things envisioning new things and then trying hard to you know mm, yeah, yeah, bring yeah. them to life before i started developing it also it was sort of like and i was spending i spent three seasons down in manali climbing over there and i was like how nice would it be mm-hmm. to have a valley full of untouched rock to develop and um Yeah, it kind of it kind of happened. It wasn't untouched untouched because just for the sake of historical accuracy uh-huh. in 2011 Narayan and Keshu and Harry who's no more and Narayan who's no more like well uh they had climbed over here and they put up like the first lines I think 20 to 30 lines. Uh but yeah, it was just it was and it is still largely largely almost entirely untapped mm-hmm. and that potential is exciting that exploration is mm. exciting and then as it happens you envision a line you do it and then it's a thing for other people to participate in and then when they enjoy the movement and they enjoy what it is yeah it's a nice feeling big wall climbers call them virgin peaks do you call them virgin rocks <laughs> I don't have a fancy word for it. It's more like cool boulders. Yeah, untouched boulders. Yeah. And Vinda, for you? Vinda, I'm not speaking anything. No. Um, I think for me too, the, the development of starting a climbing gym was fairly organic because um, there was, I mean, initially for the eight years that I was in India and climbing, started with IMF and then slowly moved to the boulder, bouldering wall that Yadu had built at his home and even that transition from like bouldering with a bunch of like from two people to three to like 20 people in one session or every session mm-hmm. uh was became quite apparent that there was a need for a space for all of these people to train and form a community um and uh, so i think 
when I saw that growth and that need for, you know, I would get random calls like, hey, I know you have a bowling wall at your house. Uh, can I come and climb there? I don't know this person. <laughs> I'm like, it's not at my house. It's, uh, I don't know you. It's really, I'm not sure I can invite you. But if there is a public center where anyone can come in at any given point of time and just climb and train, you know, that brings about uh, so much opportunity to, you know, open up the sport. Um, there was this huge, huge conflict. I had to like convince myself that this is something I want to do as well because, I mean, of course, it has nothing to do with what I studied. Um, and I come from, I would say, fairly conservative family background. Like I feel like I have, ex my parents have expectations that I need to fulfill. And there was this constant conflict. Like I spent four years and I spent lots of money studying graphic design. I should definitely open a studio or do my own thing or, you know, um, but at some point you have to realize that, you know, this is just something that's making you unhappy and that is probably something that will serve a better purpose for you and for maybe a community that you feel strongly for. Um, so since I had the opportunity um, and the support, um, I think it took me about four years to convince myself that this is something I would like to do for a long period of time. And I don't see it any other way. And once that happened, uh, the transition was quite, uh, you know, once I was convinced, I was able to just like gather information, do all the research and everything sort of fell into place. But for me, the tipping point was convincing, uh, you know, being convinced that I need to do this. Um, I think, yeah, it was a, it was quite like, should I, should I not? But so, yeah, um, and to answer your question, about why yeah. it should exist. Um, I think it's sort of personal because um, it's been a um, climbing has been quite a life changing sport for me. Yeah, yeah. And I felt that maybe others should experience it too. A lot of people have this, a similar story as well, but there was no space where everyone could come and do that together. Um, and therefore, yeah, the idea of this. I, I wouldn't say it was a unique concept. Of course, it exists everywhere in the world. Um, but it was just a matter of doing it to the best of our ability. Yeah. So it's not just financial investment, but also emotional. Absolutely. I mean, I think more so. Yeah. Because uh, now I'm completely committed to this and I have to be in it, right? I mean... E it's not a job where you can just quit the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but yeah, you, I think you, when I uh, went to IMF first, and then I got to pull the box. Then I realized that this is very big. And then I realized that I mean, money will be a lot. So, I also have this question, ki, what do you think about the return on investment on this? Not just emotionally, but financially as well. Um, so it has been way more than what we expected. Uh, our projections were very conservative. We started off with like, oh, we'll get three members in our first month. Let's just begin with that. <laughs> <laughs> three members. <laughs> but uh, we broke even in our fourth month, at least on our month on month, which was great. And now we're breaking even every month on month. Um, return on investment will obviously take some time. I suspect a year and a half, two years probably. But with the progress and the response that I'm seeing from people, I'm hopeful. I think it's doing really well. People are really happy. A lot of people are becoming climbers or are taking to the sport just because they know this space exists and, you know, they're hearing about it. So, um, yeah, the idea is just to get more people now to understand what climbing is, enjoy the sport. And, yeah. and for you, Dylan, like outdoors, like most of the times you are alone and you're working alone. Mm. And since you're not from North India, like you travel all the way from Bangalore to Satan, you mm. spend a huge time over there, mm. over here. Mm. So financially and emotionally, you have invested a lot in this. So yeah, like how do you feel about this question? Also, I don't know what do you do. So how do you balance your job as well? Mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> I primarily work as a radio consultant and a writer. So in essence, a media consultant, a media person. But radio and writing, those are my two areas. I also um, consult on a freelance basis for a friend's ad agency. So creative work 
primarily so yeah so i've job wise i've structured it in such a way that i only do things that i can do remotely which is what enables this because if i'm tied to anything that i have to be in a city for for extended periods of time then i can't give this place the kind of time it requires and uh yeah man it's, it's hard i'm going to tell you straight it's hard there's a trade off like you know you wouldn't you don't make as much money nearly as you would like to and there are times when it kind of does get to me not the fact that i don't have money in my pocket always but the fact that i would say the creative infrastructure of india is such that you know there's just lesser avenues than there should be where you could write a good article or you know you could come up with a good idea and create a media property out of it and then get paid reasonably so you can do what you need to do and i think that sort of working infrastructure is essential for any sort of artistic subculture to thrive and i yeah. think climbing falls right in that it's a subculture it's artistic it's sporty but so i work remotely to answer your question and uh yeah, yeah. i pick gigs that you yeah, about the invest emotional investment in the sport and that goes into development like do you feel that it's worth it absolutely 100% and 50 <laughs> and 100 more and like a thousand more for sure for sure come on this is this, this rock is so great it's so good <laughs> it's so special it moves so well i definitely Sweet. think it's worth it i mean projecting at times can be a little frustrating it you know you're at that brink where there are times when you just walk away with nothing on your tick list mm, right and now. things like that but it's would i be stretching it too far if i say it's kind of like raising a child and then you know when you see its potential come out it's nice <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah no it's yeah. super fulfilling it's super fulfilling i have no regrets in that uh way it's so exciting to walk around corners and see unclean boulders yeah, yeah. and be like oh my god what a line this would make what a line this would make and then get to work and then when you start working on it the movements work out and then you yeah, able to yeah, yeah. you know see it from start to finish it's great yeah there is a lot of investment yeah mm-hmm. do you have a favorite baby <laughs> <laughs> well I think family planning will have an issue with me given the kind of or the number of babies that are around but uh no I think you're connected to each one there are a couple that are def- that I've definitely invested so much of time in but I think you're connected to each bold in different ways yeah. so and there's a certain headspace you're in at the time that you do it and there's certain things that click or don't and there's certain experiences that go with it so a kind of yeah mm. changes like one question that i wanted to ask both of you was ki if you're introducing so many new people to a sport then it definitely brings up the issue of accessibility even in the outdoors and indoors and ethics so how do you deal with both of these issues like in an indoor setting where people are coming for the first time or likewise in outdoors where people have been in a gym setting and they're coming out to for the first time um should i go ahead uh for us i think uh, there are a lot of like unspoken ethics when you're climbing together in a group and uh, we have this one hour introductory class that we encourage everyone to start off climbing with where we outline all of these ethics um subtly or through the process of how we're conducting that one hour class um and hopefully then everyone is sort of aware and that culture is you know then yeah. um like brushing holes constantly or like spotting each other is spotting each other all of those things um so i mean we try and make sure that everyone has an induction into it through us and we have prince like guidelines that we follow um but otherwise of course if you know that's the only way you can control it mm-hmm. and that signage but outdoors it's a much bigger issue yeah. than indoors yeah it's 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 more complicated outdoors um i think generally you kind of if you're talking about numbers of people coming into an area <laughs> it 
India, I mean, the whole thing of new areas, even though development has been happening in India for a while, new areas popping up and, you know, such like, is still relatively new. And in general, my belief is that climbers are a population that will do more good for an area than bad natural yeah. spaces and that they tend to take care of it better than those who just casually yeah, yeah, pass yeah, yeah, by. Yeah. You know, they're not going to smash a bottle. They're yeah. not going to throw Maggie wrappers down. They're not going to just smash a lighter, yeah. Yeah. you know, throw, throw too many ciggies down. Uh, leave a pack of cards after they've played. So that sort of thing is quite common in natural spaces yeah, 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 in yeah. India. And I think climbers coming in introduces a nice specimen, a nice species, yeah. you know, who's just that much more conscious. Hmm. So, yeah. and I think in that yeah. regard, India yeah. and the West, they have slightly different narratives. And given mm -hmm. how nascent climbing is, I don't think we're at a point where uh, like, oh my God, there's way too many climbers in any given place. However, however, areas are fragile, yeah. especially alpine areas, and things can go out of hand quickly and it can slip through your fingers if you don't establish certain precedents. And this is something I've just been learning along the way. So mostly it's a take it as it comes approach, but uh, in terms of ethics, yeah, the similar things in terms of brushing off chalk. Yeah. I think that's particularly important over here because if you just put like cakes and cakes of chalk and you leave it and then it rains and then that kind of forms a layer and then the next person comes and puts more chalk then eventually it's going to deprive the rock of its natural friction which yeah. is going to change the nature of the climb the difficulty and just everything and it's not nice and there are areas internationally where this has happened I, I believe in magic woods this is a bit of an issue now and in certain other spaces so yeah Chalk, how to use it, how to brush it off. It's good to set that as a precedent. Um, if you're cleaning new lines, the kind of brushes that you should use mm -hmm. and the way that you should typically brush the rock, that's a good precedent to set. I think also it's very uh, essential the way that you interact with the local community. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that you establish your relationships with them. And it's, it's easy for a big group to kind of come as this independent party and put on music, uh, you know, just do like your... Fire and yeah, yeah, just yeah. colonize a space yeah. in a way. Even if you're not like, this is my land, there's just this, oh, well, here I am and here's my music. Yeah. And it's loud, very loud with subwoofers. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's possible for this kind of thing to happen. So I think these little things are important where you ask, is it okay? If I play this music, mm. is it too loud? Just keep a check on... I don't mean to be a music Nazi. I don't even know why I'm going on this trajectory. But these are all little things that have happened. It's just, yeah. for example, the nature of lyrics that are playing. Check the surroundings. Just the tiny things, man. Mm -hmm. The tiny yeah. things. And I think, uh, yeah, just a good... A nice mindset towards those who are putting in the effort to develop an area and I'm not placing myself as I'm not saying oh well what I would really want is for people to be nice to Dylan but I'm not going to use the word Dylan and I'm going to say someone else no mm -hmm. I don't mean that I just mean in general yeah just interact try to find out a little bit about mm -hmm. the area how things came about what happened how the development's been going and yeah, just orient yourself as well just little things like that and keeping it a bit organic where you know it grows over time and these little things get consolidated so as more people come they know the ways yeah. just yeah simple things like that and of course when it comes to safety practices such as spotting and such like there is that to think about and yeah, I think uh, places like Boulder Box have a huge role over there, you know, where you can teach people how to spot. And I think even over here, you can do spotting workshops and little things like that. Uh, we'll also have to look at things like 
trails, you know, following mm. fixed trails to sectors and not going boom, 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 boom anyway. Because just imagine a hundred people walking across that yeah. soil, which is really fertile, but I'll you know sort of lose it can it can it can create certain negative uh, long term impacts. So setting certain trails and trying to make sure that you follow them and yeah just certain practices like that so should like one to. main issue in the outdoors is about projects and about the ethics that you go for a project like mm. if it's someone else's project do you approach them or you don't or like if somebody has the clean line before you then how do you go about like if you want to attempt it I mean so like what about those ethics like what do you feel about them I have my view yeah. and I think with ethics it's it's hard to enforce it on everyone who comes into an area saying hey man this is the way that you should approach every single climbing problem this is the attitude that you should have hence also you know the importance on it being a bit organic because over time you do understand that oh okay fine this is generally a viewpoint and it's nice to follow this and this is the reasoning behind this viewpoint so my view is to respect vision. I'll put it that way. Respect yeah. vision. Respect the person who's put in the effort to bring a line to life. And if you want to try it, by all means, go for it. But, you know, just have a word with that person. If they're there, ask them. Say, hey, man, saw your line. It looks great. Do you mind if I give it a try? And I think most of the times people will be perfectly okay with it. And in case they say, you know what, I'd rather you not, I'd like to try it and, you know, do it first and maybe you can try it then. I would respect that. Mm -hmm. This is just me. Can I enforce that on other people? I don't think so. Should yeah. I enforce that on other people? I don't think so. Because I think ethics in itself is kind of tacit. It's a little subtle. Yeah. But... Especially in bouldering, like in sports climbing, like they always have this thing, right? If you bolt a line, then you're entitled to a first ascent or like no one will like touch your project. There's such a thing. But in bouldering, people generally look at it as uh, there isn't any financial investment in opening a new boulder or cleaning a new boulder. So that part doesn't get recognized, the emotional investment of a person. Yeah, or there's nothing tangible, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In sport climbing, there are... Tangible bolts bolts that yeah. you can see mm. yeah so it becomes very visible and tangible yeah. in bouldering it's kind of oddly the reverse there's moss that you can't yeah, if the yeah. boulder has yeah, been cleaned yeah, yeah. or things like that and you can't and vision or envisioning a line isn't a very tangible thing so it's just i think it comes down to human interaction you need to recognize how emotionally invested a person is in something and if you think that you know it's important for them to fulfill that or they're so invested that you know finishing it first or doing it would mean a lot to them mm. and their well-being then I think as a human being it's fair to say respect mm. that there are people who may not and it is what it, it is yeah. it is what it is how do you feel key these two places are here? influencing or like helping the Indian climbing community well, with boulder box obviously <laughs> like so like you meet every new climber right now who is in Delhi or who is passing through everybody is excited to go to boulder box because now we have a dedicated space to climb mm -hmm. like I was talking to Prerna the other day and she yeah. was like I needed that place now hmm. where I had one dedicated place to train where we had everything that we needed hmm. and so that's definitely a game changer for her and for many others mm -hmm. so like how do you see this I think it's a beginning yeah but I do feel that there is a lot that competitive climbers will need to be able to up their game yeah. from uh, an infrastructural point of view um so I see Boulder Box as just a stepping stone into a lot more that should happen. Um, and I don't, I, I think that's a good thing because I don't want to get complacent with, okay, now this gym is here, we have four floors, it's done. I would like to constantly do more with the space because there is a lot of, um, you know, real estate that we can use to grow this. Um, 
so I see climbers training there, but I also see loopholes where I can improve, which will help them train better. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's just a starting point. And doing for you? The uh, house is gonna help Indian climbing. Or yeah, the or the uh, yeah, Indian climbing. Ah, uh, I. You know what? I generally don't think of it from a oh here is this new product for the Indian climbing scene type of yeah, yeah. that's not my approach you know it is what it is it's a great new area it has some of the most amazing rock and I think well if you have to if I'm really really forced to answer it in that way well man lots of great rock, rock. you know a surplus of hard lines which are slowly you know coming up and yeah I think in India what is nice and what's necessary are you know more areas with a good concentration of hard lines like harder grades and just yeah more variety of styles so from that aspect yeah but generally it's kind of like it is what it is I see some I see meaning and I see I feel happy about doing what I do I see meaning in doing what I do and meaning not that's the thing there's this massive onus on meaning having to translate to a larger community always and mm -hmm. it's been running through my mind to say this at some point and I think there's great value in doing what you love yeah. mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you don't have to always do a thing for a larger cause mm -hmm. that is yeah. it's that is the cause that is a larger cause it, it impacts and in a very positive way more people and in more ways than you can imagine just really really going for it with whatever it is that mm, you're passionate mm. about just being passionate I think that has its place in the world mm. and India is in the world it has its place in India um, in that sense yeah and I think organically once again sorry I've just used that word to like <laughs> just like I may as well I don't know. I may as well just start talking about avocados and other <laughs> hipster food. I love avocados, by the way. I really do. But I'm just saying organic, organic. <laughs> um, sorry for the tangents. Do you make but, your own soap, Dylan? Huh? Do you make your own soap? Hey, you know what? I may, like Ali makes uh, our own... Deodorant. Yeah, yeah, deodorant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our own toothpaste. So maybe I'm like... Maybe I'm like a hipster who doesn't know it or <laughs> just looks at other hipsters and says like, oh my God, that's so hipster. But that's the most hipster <laughs> thing to do. Um, so yeah, a new space, new rock, new setting. And I think there's not many uh, up until recently, not a lot of Indian climbers have really climbed in alpine areas. And so they're like, you know, the understanding of friction and styles and things like that was limited. So yeah definitely mm. in those very obvious ways but I think what the Indian climbing community and I think what India in general needs is a sort of a, a better artistic economy to be honest because even for an area like this for people to be able to come and spend time you need the time yeah and you need to be able to make enough money doing you know the odd gig here or there is structuring your life in such a way that you can spend time in yeah. more areas and I think that is something that is really locked down you mm -hmm. just don't have those type of opportunities you know too many of them so I think that's the larger angle and that's the larger story when we as a culture develop more of an economy around art mm. and freelancing and know and have and learn to economize, not economize, that is the wrong word, but yeah, learn to see economic value in the lifestyles of people mm -hmm. and then translate that into something tangible, which in turn gives more people the opportunity to do things that are meaningful and gives them avenues to earn from it and sustain themselves. Yeah. So I think the answer is kind of outside of climbing really mm. I mean it's a straightforward question not a straightforward answer but unfortunately it's not a straightforward situation yeah 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 seriously yeah, you speak so good but you express so, so hey. good yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> so and what's that one thing that's missing in both these places like Boulder Box and Satan 
which will help in the development of these places or like will help serve the purpose that mm, was in your mind when you built these places it's a perfect place like this <laughs> 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 um mm-hmm. and what's missing um I'm, i'm gonna have to think yeah and you want to go for it again there's no one thing that's missing um i would phrase it this way i think it's evolving and i think each season as it goes along you learn more there are just things that you're doing better like i think this season i'm brushing better i know how to brush boulders better because i've learned that and so there are all these small little things that are evolving and it's just it's work in progress so that's i don't think there's anything missing missing per se because it's fantastic they wouldn't you like like more people to come in and like brush more boulders or like develop more areas like would it be helpful or like is that missing it's it it's sort of like it's nice when it kind of comes from within if you know <coughs> what i mean yeah you know i wouldn't want to put that thing of like hey come brush come on brush this no i don't want to do it that way it's nice when people are feel like checking something that's not necessarily established or fully known or things like that but they still want to take the effort to come and have a look and obviously you know pictures and videos and that kind of thing psychs people up it makes mm-hmm. sense and when you have a 10 day window you're like oh my god that looks really good I feel like going and trying that problem it's like i don't want to pretend to be above that stuff i'm not but yeah there's there's a sort of a nameless thing that you know it, it resonates with you when you go to a new area and then you feel like taking a brush and cleaning something and doing something new and i feel that you cannot crowdsource that mentality it kind of comes together yeah in an odd natural way and as it does come together it's nice and it gets nicer so yeah i don't have any regrets I do go into a lot of runs to myself and yeah to Ali and things like that and I think to most people I'm a very rounded person but generally speaking no I don't have so many regrets I think those who are motivated and those who feel something calling to them they do brush and then there are those who see those brush and then they'll come and they'll be like oh I'll help you with this I'll brush and then they realize that it's a nice way to uncover a problem so it let it happen by itself like a nice tight small crew would be good Mm. that's all i don't think there's anything missing and that's the thing i think as indians i think in india we feel like there's just that something that's not there in terms of yeah. rock or there's just something yeah, but it's yeah, really like that. if you look at it it's there we have to just get to it yeah and linda i think i'm going to steal dilan's answer yeah i think it's also an it's a process so um i don't know if i can identify one thing that's missing there are lots of things that would add value to the space and they'll come when the right time comes yeah and like the way karana wanted to ask this question ki like what got you guys into this <laughs> like in development especially you didn't ki they like, why is this guy brushing things over here why is he staying over here for such long time so no i don't know about much about climbing so and and i think it's nice chatting with someone like that you know i think sometimes it's just like all climbers mm. all people who are in mm. talking and it, the, the the conversation gets very oh yeah if i just put like this <laughs> this finger a little this way and then this one came on that crystal then i could have gone like this and then done this <laughs> toe hook and gone this undercling and then everyone's just kind of like you know beta talking and it becomes this conversation that if you step outside of that bubble you're like what's happening yeah. <laughs> yeah so it is nice uh what got me to it i think i think i'm excited i i think I, generally the prospect of breaking new ground excites me generally being the first to do something or just being um looking at something seeing potential and then seeing that come to life then i think it excites me it resonates with me and over the years enough to a point that i've wanted to really wrap my life around it so 
that is a kind of simple answer as to why I'm doing this. And I see, uh, yeah, obviously this can be world class. Yeah. This is world class rock already. So I, there's that too, but that's really the primal answer to it. Mm. Anything that we haven't talked, <laughs> you'd mm. like to say, express. You did anything wanna... good, anything bad, anything technical, anything organic. Organic, <laughs> yes, organic. Lots of organic stuff like apples and plums. And <laughs> you did want to ask if there were people who sort of inspired you, yeah. in, uh, yeah, yeah, inspired yeah. me along the way. Yeah, ending. that's what I wanted oh. to get to. This oh, you wanted to get to yeah, it. Yeah, uh, like who was? Was there anybody who you looked looked up to, who inspired you to develop new ideas, or you who exposed you to this whole process of development? That definitely, Pill Pill Locky, one hundred percent. Something began them, and I cannot say. Yeah, I think as I, I've said there was a an excitement and a predisposition towards. Um, checking something out that's new but I think I really got like such a nice inside view listening to Pill talk about how he developed so many areas and Humpy and the entire Chandra Valley and his process and his mind space and the way he envisioned lines and just so many aspects of it yeah and it's this was like back in the day when they had even less resources like and it's not so back in the day. This was 2014 yeah. when I first met him. But we spoke a lot. And I think that was like... Because Bill, everyone knew of Bill. Because he was in the guidebook and everyone's like, oh yeah, Bill's the guy who's done everything. But he's kind of reticent. Super chatty. Super nice. But does his own thing. Kind of reticent. And I was interviewing him for an article and then... Um, he was eating porridge and he finished his porridge and he said oh so you like climbing and like our conversation literally started like that and then we were talking a lot about how Humpy came to be how he developed over there and I think it was a really really nice first hand view and I've met more people over the past four or five years who've really really put themselves into development and pushing hard so I think um, along the way everyone there's something that each person does which kind of sparks you yeah. you know that just sets off a little spark it's not like this one raging fire inside it's like all these little sparks that go yeah. and it keeps a motor running yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's sort of like that um but yeah, somewhere the first ignition was spilled, for sure. But then so many people along the way, man. People I've not met, but whose videos I only see on YouTube and Instagram. And, you know, cause I'm always inspired by anyone who's climbing bloody hard, man. Yanya Gunbread, for example, <laughs> Adam Onra, like all these people who... And, and I know that Yanya is primarily in the comp scene, but I think anyone who's really like... Just pushing them through the air. Just like really grinding and pushing... 100% inspires me mm. like just about anyone so but as you backtrack obviously the generation of uh, band I hope I said that mm. right Bernd Zangrel and Fred Nicole obviously Fred Nicole you know Clem Lawscott all these guys who brought these areas to life they've done so much mm. and when you learn more about how much they've done it's amazing and it always gives you perspective it gives you there are times when you're feeling doubt there are times when you feel plain stupid you feel pointless especially on the days when you're not climbing as well or you didn't have the level of success that you expected but it's nice to sort of revisit stories of these people and then see how it all came together it, it helps you get a bit less short-sighted mm -hmm. and you know look at things from a long from a long view yeah the entire yeah it's the climbing world in general I'm super like I think there's people in India as well who've you know 
quite a lot of them and I don't want to be that guy who's like before making nationality a thing I think I put it out over there that I consider Pill at a level to almost be Indian he spent so much of time and he knows India and its rock so well but I think even Indians within the community a lot of people their work and the way they climb inspired me I think like I learned quite a bit from Sandeep mm. you know uh there are times when I'm trying hard and I kind of have this image of how he grits his teeth and I think mm. try hard try harder you know grind yeah. try harder so uh definitely I think mm. he's done something that's of value yeah. and you know put all his eggs in the bouldering basket which is still a pretty unrewarding basket <laughs> in that way but no so so many mm. people just in and along and for you Rinda like were there climbers internationally or back here in home who were like inspired you as a climber or as a person to develop such a space um not in particular i am inspired by a lot of people and a lot of things which are also very unrelated to climbing yeah um it is often unrelated to mm. climbing so i mean i relate to architecture to design to art to a nice looking boulder a line or like even an aesthetic indoor look boulder which flows nicely so it's just a bunch of things that intrigue me which mm. culminated in this and i think the space speaks for it because we did go into like you know um the design process of it was very exciting for me as well um as well as daunting because i had to commit to it <laughs> um so yeah it's often just a lot of people who do lots of various things like book binding is super inspiring like this toy in front of me is super like intriguing like how the wood is cut up and like i don't know i can't pinpoint like okay this person i look up to and they mm. inspired me i haven't had that one individual so far but it's nice that there's often like little bits of things that are all this yeah. yeah you can't quantify inspiration, inspiration like that you know yeah. it's 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 super hard to have this filter uh in yourself where you're looking at someone who's doing who's completely invested in something let's just say they're doing the carpentry in this house but they just yeah. this 100% mm-hmm. invested individual and they've really put everything on their life on pause just to get that done and you can't be like looking at that saying wow this is great oh wait but it's not climbing so it doesn't matter yeah. you know you can't do that the effort the investment the try hard it's something that you take away because i think these are more primal qualities mm. and then you can translate that into your climbing what is it after all climbing is just another activity yeah. mm-hmm. but you you see something you try it you uh learn what where you are in that process what you're lacking what you're good at you use your learning to basically get better then you try again you evaluate and then you try hard and you make sure you try to get it done yeah this can be applicable to anything yeah. creating an album making a video you know yeah writing a book anything, anything writing yeah. a book carpentry yeah. just about cooking, anything cooking food. yeah cooking food yeah i know you guys are really into it just about <laughs> anything yeah. yeah and i think the activity that these qualities then translate onto that's really the outer mm. but what really inspires at the core and what stays is those qualities and mm. it's sort of like a weird Shakespearean play you know how they say Shakespeare is very applicable in modern day scenarios mm-hmm. as well that's because it speaks a lot of human nature and which may have changed with Instagram or whatever but <laughs> just a little bit but again not you know because vanity is vanity yeah, 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 narcissism yeah, yeah. is narcissism hmm. it has existed it's not like social media has mm. literally created this yeah. new mm. quality within human beings it's just a manifestation and manifestations yeah, yeah. change but the qualities are I a mean, bit more hardwired and i think they evolve over millennia and maybe even longer periods but 
Yeah, they did. Yeah. You should have just interviewed uh, Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but like, this conversation has just extended for like a long time. So thank you for being here. Thank you for taking out the time. Man. Thank you, Vrinda Bhagiri. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you fi- like enjoy saying my last name? <laughs> it's got it's got a lot of punch. Ah. Yeah, there's there's, there's some names which just Vrinda's like, reaction be badi aata hai like. So yeah. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you for well, yeah. chatting. Yeah.